I welcome Dr. Pradyumna Krishnapa, Regional Medical Advisor, South India Medical Affairs, Biological Emerging Markets. Dr. Pradyumna Krishnapa, please come on to the stage, sir. Request him to talk on the topic, hexavalent vaccine, the value is in evidence. Good afternoon, dear doctors. At the outset, I would like to thank IIP Malapuram branch as well as the Kerala State Pedicon organizing faculty for giving me this opportunity to present in front of this august and highly scientific audience. It is indeed my pleasure and honor to be speaking here. So today I'll be talking about this uh, new vaccine which has been launched recently. This is the hexavalent uh, acelar, uh, three component acelar pertussis containing vaccine, DTAP vaccine. So the value is in the evidence. So before I start, I would like to mention one important aspect. Vaccines are really important. It is often said that vaccines do not save lives. It's the act of vaccination that does. Uh, WHO mentions that, WH, uh, that vaccines are second only to safe drinking uh, water in terms of its intervention to reduce mortality and uh, morbidity. Uh, do you feel that WHO has overrated it about the vaccines or the general public per se, they have underrated the value of vaccination? I feel it's the latter. Considering the fact that if you see 20 to 30 years back, we could see almost like each and every street had at least one polio case. But going now, going forward, how we have actually reduced, in fact, smallpox has been eradicated. We are in the near end game for polio. So value of vaccines is immense. It is not the immediate benefit from vaccination which is really important because we do not get any immediate benefit unlike any antibiotic or anything. We definitely see a long-term benefit for the society as well as the country. So my only sincere urge is we as healthcare professionals, we need to push this pro promotion for vaccination so we do not want to promote any vaccines per se, but definitely the concept of vaccination needs to be promoted from HCP's perspective. So today's, today's uh, uh, agenda is I'll be briefly talking about the background, about the product. Then finally, I'll be uh, talking about the clinical evidence right from immunogenicity and safety up till the post licensure experience. So when we talk about immunization in the first few months in India, we usually target around nine to 10 diseases in the first year in the primary series itself. And you can see that this particular vaccine covers the top six diseases, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, polio, hib, and hepatitis B. So with three shots in the, pri in the primary series, although there are countries which are using only two doses in the first year of life, uh, it can be used in varying flexibility, but in India we are targeting 6, 10, 14 week schedule because that is the one which is most frequently and commonly used by the healthcare professionals. So this particular vaccine covers six diseases out of the nine or 10 diseases that we are targeting in the first year of life. So this is the value this particular vaccine is going to bring in the primary schedule. So coming to the scheduling, why we have chosen 6, 10, 14 week schedule? Of course, in various countries, it has been used in varying flexibility. There are countries which are using it at just second and fourth month. There are countries using it at third and fifth month. There are also three uh, countries using three uh, primary series, either at two, three, four, two, four, six, or three, four, five month schedule. We have chosen this considering the fact that in India, the most common used schedule is six, 10, 14 week schedule for all DTP, IPV, HBV, and HIV. And hence we have used 6, 10, 14 week schedule and even in our study, we have actually directed our focus and attention to having 6, 10, 14 week schedule in India. So this is a, a vaccine which is a six in one combination vaccine. It covers six diseases. It is uh, used majorly, at least in India, we can use it as three plus one primary and booster schedule. It can be used any time between six weeks up to 36 months of age, that is up to three years. And one good important aspect about this product is that it can be used in preterm infants more than or equal to 24 weeks of gestational age. So definitely this vaccine can be used in extreme preterms less than 28 weeks of gestational age. When we talk about the composition, we have uh, full doses of almost all the antigens diphtheria tetanus at 30 and 40 international units, 
Bordetella pertussis, we are having three components, pert pertussis toxoid, filamentous hemagglutin, and pertactin at 25, 25, and 8 micrograms. Hepatitis B, we are having 10 micrograms. Polio, we have all the three types, which is really important. We know the importance of polio now. Uh, 48 and 32 Dalton units. Then Hib, we have 10 micrograms. One important aspect I would also like to mention here is for all the diseases that we have, uh, everything has a zero uh, protective uh, value. There is a cutoff threshold. Uh, so hence, we usually call it as zero conversion. But except for pertussis toxoid, pertussis antigens, where we do not have an arbitrary cutoff point, we usually refer to as zero positivity and not zero protection. We keep up, uh, arbitrarily five ELISA units per ml uh, as a zero positive cutoff. But for every other disease, we have a zero protective cutoff, meaning to say that antibody levels above this cutoff value is we can give guarantee or confirmation that that much amount of antibodies is sufficient to protect the child from developing that particular disease. For example, diphtheria and tetanus, we have 0.1 international units per ml. For hepatitis B, it is 10 milli international units per ml. For polio, it is 1 is to 8 neutralization. And for Hib, we have short-term and long-term protection, 0.15 and 1 microgram per ml, respectively. So when we talk about uh, its uh, uh, evidence. We have more than 100 GSK sponsored international studies. More than 41,000 infants have received primary vaccination in our trials, and more than 21,000 toddlers have received booster doses. Being a hexavalent vaccine, we have six core important messages. One is robust 3 plus 1 immunogenicity and safety. We have robust long term immune persistence, seven years for all the antigens, 12 years for hepatitis B. Thirdly, we have Pertussis efficacy and effectiveness. Considering the fact that we do not have a perfect cutoff for pertussis, uh, establishing efficacy and effectiveness for pertussis becomes really important. Fourthly, we have robust data on preterm infants. Uh, that is really important considering the fact that almost one out of 10 uh, births in India, more than that I would probably say, are preterm infants. Fifth, uh, fifth we have widest co-administration data. So it can be used in, uh, along with PCV10, PCV13. It can be used with RV1, RV5. It can be used with MMR, varicella, and MMRV vaccines. And also it can be used with any of the meningococcal vaccines. And lastly, but most importantly, we have established safety profile, not only in clinical trials, but we have almost 17 years of post-marketing uh, uh, experience. So meaning to say that this vaccine is used in more than 26 countries in the national immunization program and more than 100 countries it is registered across the globe. So when we talk about the first important aspect, when we talk about the global data, this is a culmination of 15 studies, which included almost all the schedules, be it 234, where two studies were involved, 196 subjects. Then we had two four six month schedule, six studies were included, 1,693 subjects were included in this uh, schedule. We also had studies wherein uh, Infantic XI was used as three, four, five month schedule, six studies included, 1055 subjects, and so on and so forth. Even there was uh, uh, this uh, study where it, it was used as six, 10, and 14 week schedule. So this is a culmination of 15 studies. Wherever we have got the lowest zero conversion and zero positivity percentages, that one we have used. For example, you can see for diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, uh, it is more than or equal to 99%. When we talk about polio, even IPV1 and IPV3, you see good zero, per zero conversion percentages, but we have chosen for the lowest one, that is IPV2. In one study, we got IPV2 uh, zero conversion percentage to be in the tune of 97, uh, 95%, and hence that is one which has been mentioned. When we talk about booster, this is a culmination of 12 studies. Again, you can see majority of the antigens are reaching almost close to 100%. Diphtheria, tetanus, more than or equal to 99.9%. Uh, zero protection, and for pertussis, it is more than or equal to 99.5% zero positivity. When we talk about tolerance and safety, whether it is injection site reactions or solid state systemic reactions, you can see here, 24 studies for primary immunization, 19 studies for booster immunization. Orange bars indicate primary immunization, blue uh, or blue-green bar indicates booster immunization. And none of the bar is overshooting as compared to the other bars, be it injection site or 
systemic reactions indicating that this particular vaccine is well tolerated globally. So we have talked, talked about global data. When we talk about Indian data, we had one similar study where we had four centers and three cities involved, Pune, uh, Belgaum and Chennai. Two centers were from Pune. Uh, so we had one is to one randomization, 224 subjects. So one group received six, 10, 14 weeks schedule. The other group received two, four months group, uh, two, two, four months uh, schedule, two, four, six months schedule. And blood was drawn one month after the last dose for each arm. And what they found out was uh, following the primary series itself, you could see very pretty high uh, zero conversion and zero positivity percentages. And when we talked about when we talk about tolerance, again, we uh, pain was slightly higher with a 6, 10, 14 weeks group. Uh, but overall, when you see, it was almost all similar across both the groups, indicating that uh, irrespective of which schedule we prefer to use, this particular vaccine is tolerated very well in the Indian infants. When you talk about long-term persistence, I have mentioned seven years for all antigens, 12 years for HBV. In fact, for HBV, it was done as a challenge test where uh, children who had taken two, three, four months primary series and 11 to 14 months booster, their zero pro protective titers were 98.4%. But uh, at 12 to 13 years, they gave us a, a challenge HBV dose. So what they found out was 97.6% anamnestic response. Anamnestic response is nothing but fourfold increase in the antibody titers. So what this suggests or reflects is when child has taken primary and booster doses in the less than two year age group, when it, when it comes in contact with an hepatitis B antigen later on in life, it will definitely be protected. So that is what this particular study indicates. Coming to Pertussis efficacy and effectiveness, there were two large studies. Uh, one was German household contact study, which included more than 22,000 subjects. And the other one was Italian randomized double blind study, which included 14,000 subjects. You can see in both these studies, the efficacy of Pertussis. This, is, this was primarily done for Infanrix, uh, but since the components are similar, Infanrix and Infanrix Hexa, the uh, equivalence is established. So even the regulatory authorities have accepted that the acellar pertussis efficacy is uh, comparable because we use the same quantity, same antigen, and same raw material. So 83 to 89% efficacy. So evidence in preterms are really important. One in 10 babies are born preterm every year. India ranks number one in terms of preterm births globally, and incidence of preterm birth is increasing in most countries. So it becomes really important to have data on preterm infants. So it should be possible for uh, HCPs to actually give uh, these uh, vaccines for preterm infants. More than 1,600 preterm infants included in 10 clinical trials. And uh, they have established and found that there was similar levels of zero positivity and zero protection in preterm infants as compared to full term infants. And there was clinically acceptable safety profile in both in all preterm, uh, low birth weight and very low birth weight infants. And it was well tolerated in co-administration regimens in preterm infants. This is one study. I am not going to go for all the studies. Uh, in Spain, there was uh, vaccination compared with preterm and full term infants. So the full term is uh, dark bars and the preterm are the light bars. You can see that for almost all the 10 antigens which are present in this particular vaccine, you can see almost comparable immunogenicity for both preterm as well as full term infants. For example, tolerance, again you see for full term it is the light bars and for preterms it is the brown dark bars. For both local as well as general symptoms, there was no difference whatsoever. And even though it was numerical, it was not statistically or clinically relevant. Statistically significant, also it was not statistically significant, uh, nor it was clinically relevant. Co-administration with childhood vaccines, as I mentioned, so you can use with all these vaccines, this particular vaccine. So it has got robust data, co-administration data. In fact, in the national immunization program in the UK, uh, Infanrix XI is used along with uh, PCV13, that is Prevena. So, there are countries which are using this particular vaccine with other vaccines as co-administration. Only thing is, it has to be at different sites. That is the only uh, thing. 
post licensure ex uh, uh, experience we have more than 16 crore doses delivered globally as of september 2017 and the 10 most frequently spontaneously reported events occurred at a frequency of less than or equal to 2.3 per <coughs> lakh doses excuse me so meaning to say that this particular vaccine uh, globally has been very well tolerated no vaccination programs reported interruption due to safety issues <coughs> so coming back to my six summary points one is again the robust immunogenicity and safety with a 3 plus 1 schedule especially the 6 10 14 week schedule which is uh, the i mean which is uh, best suited for indian setup secondly widest co-administration data so you can use with n number of vaccines Thirdly, highly immunogenic and well tolerated across various schedules. It can be used with preterm infants. Extensive post marketing surveillance shows acceptable toler tolerability in full term as well as preterm infants. And the only six in one vaccine supported by safety and immunogenicity data from prospective trials in preterm infants. And the only six in one vaccine with more than 17 years of use in clinical practice. So these are some of the safety information which is almost similar to any of the injectable vaccines that you see. Of course, there can be injection site reactions and of course there can be uh, some of the systemic reactions. And uh, only one important uh, thing I would like to highlight here is uh, there is nothing, there is no concept actually as uh, known as a painless vaccine. So that's a flawed concept. I don't know where this uh, thing has started up. Because each and every vaccine, you do come across certain amount of both local as well as systemic reactions. Of course, with wholesale purposes containing vaccines, you definitely see much more higher uh, reactions as compared to acilla ones. But definitely you can see some amount, but that should be negligible and can be manageable. So majority of the times I have seen that uh, HCPs have done, ma have managed it really well uh, with whatever the symptoms that the child uh, presents with after the vaccination also. So we do come across certain uh, adverse events, but at, that is at a bare minimum. Uh, this is the abbreviated prescribing information which can be found in the internet and uh, pretty much available. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your patient listening. And uh, one important fact I would like to mention, uh, this particular product, uh, yes, uh, of course, uh, being uh, uh, leaders in vaccine industry in the world, so we do have certain limitations. We have uh, more than 38 to 40 vaccines which are being manufactured. And uh, it's sometimes really difficult considering the fact that some of the vaccines actually do require uh, more than a year. In fact, pneumococcal vaccines require two years to manufacture. If a person has to get a vaccine today, the same vaccine needs to be manufactured two years before. And there can be some amount of forecasting errors. Forecasting percentage success rate is only hardly 60%. So meaning to say that there can, we do come across a uh, lot of supply issues being a biological product. And of course, we, uh, from, from my company's perspective, uh, we do apologize for that. But then uh, supply is a problem for any biological company. And uh, over a period of time, we have learned to manage it well. But considering the fact that there can be a lot of recommendations which crops up immediately. For example, in the US, there was this recommendation for Shingrix that actually had uh, some effect on Varilrix because the same antigen needs to be used for Shingrix production. So a lot of these things are really important and that is the reason why we sometimes face supply issues because we need to ensure that we need to supply to each and every country's requirement and that can become a challenge at, at times. So on this note, thank you very much, uh, and uh, thank you. Thank you, doctor. I welcome Dr. Nanda Kumar, organizing secretary, onto the dais. Before that, there is a query. So whether this vaccine gives adequate protection against hepatitis B, and also people say that uh, what do you call it, uh, hot cell pertussis vaccination is better rather than this uh, uh, SLA pertussis vaccination for using immunity. So that's why IAP is promoting uh, this one. Pendavac, uh, that means whole cell purchase vaccination, and, and ra as a, rather than this one. What is your comment about that? Uh, Hepatitis B protections and also whole cell purchase vaccination. Whole cell versus the acilla purchases. True, sir. When we talk about the duration of protection, definitely when we, uh, because 
Pertussis is not a disease where, unlike hepatitis A or any of those chronic diseases, where once we vaccinate, we get lifelong immunization. This particular disease is such that we need to have boosters. There is no compromise without boosters. For example, when we talk about even with natural infection with pertussis, there can be hardly 15 to 20 years protection. But after that, the immune levels keeps dropping. And uh, when we talk about whole cell pertussis, the protection lasts somewhere between 8 to 12 years. And for uh, acellar pertussis, it is even more lesser. Only th the reason why, like, when we talk about WP, WP duration of protection is slightly better. When we uh, say the duration, it can be like two years or three years additional as compared to the acellar pertussis uh, vaccines. But when we talk about the entire globe, uh, tell me uh, at least at least one or two countries which have actually shifted from acellar pertussis to whole cell pertussis vaccine. None, hardly none. Because even in the US when there was actually uh, the pertussis outbreaks in California, when they actually made a clear cut analysis, they found out that one, the pertussis incidence was increasing right before they made a switch from WPP to AP. So the pertussis increase was there much before that. Secondly, what they found out was there was a lot of lapse with booster, that is especially the Tdap vaccination. When they analyzed the 10-year Tdap vaccination percentage, how many of them had taken it, the coverage, it was just 20%. So that is one of the reasons why the adolescent and adult immunization is a, such a, I mean, it's really a difficult task. Because even in the developed settings, the overall uh, the percentage is pretty low. So none of the developed countries have shifted from acellar to whole cell pertussis because they fear that the confidence of the public will come down because of the increased reactions what you see for whole cell pertussis. But definitely IAP is actually checking out on this and probably they are going to come up with a much more inclusive recommendation this year onwards because I think uh, they are up in, I mean, within few months, few days, I think we should have uh, the latest IAP uh, 2018 recommendations. So I think they are in the preparatory phase and uh, we need to see what exactly that will mention. Ah. B, sir. Hepatitis B usually in our settings, in our country, because we, yeah, this one. So we do have that bird dose. In case if bird dose is not given, the protection uh, reduces. Because with the booster also, we get almost 90% protection. But when the hepatitis B bird dose is given, the protection with the booster can go up to 99%. So that is the change that we have. And, and only with the primary series, if we have not given hepatitis B in the bird dose, we see only 78%. So it's always better if we add up more doses of hepatitis B. Because considering the fact that India is having a changing epidemiology, ep epidemicity, it's much better that we have uh, more doses of hepatitis B that is only uh, going to help reduce the carrier state in our country. So it's much as, more is actually much better for hepatitis B. Thank you very much. Thanks. I request Dr. Faisal to please come onto the dais. Sir, please hand over a memento to Dr. Pradyumna Krishnapa. Thank you, Doctor.